Hello, my name is Joe Cartwright and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to be producing a full step-by-step -step watercolour painting of a snow scene with figures. It has lots of information which I hope you will find very useful. So let's begin. With the drawing done, I start by wetting the back of my paper twice quite thoroughly. I'm now ready to begin the painting stage. I begin by putting plenty of water in my palette for the sky. The colour I use for this is cobalt blue. I test my colours on a scrap piece of watercolour paper so that I'm confident with the tone and colour that I mix. While the back of my paper is still absorbing all that water, I take this opportunity to mix my initial shadow colour. For that I'm going to use a lot of French ultramarine, a small amount of permanent rose, making sure that the violet leans towards the blue and also a tiny bit of burnt sienna just to grey that off. Because the sky is a lovely blue, some of that blue will be reflected into the shadow colours, which is why I use this mixture for my shadows. I wet the back of my paper again and also my backing board. This will give me a lot more time to paint before the surface of my paper dries too much. After making a small adjustment to the sky colour, I paint the sky. The darkest tone will be towards the right because the light in this scene is coming from the left. This stage I begin to dilute the mixture so that the sky on the left hand side is lighter in tone than the sky on the right. In the areas where I'm going to be painting tree foliage, I lift some of the sky colour so that the colour of the foliage is a little bit brighter in that area. I use some burnt sienna and French ultramarine for the hat of the taller figure. For my flesh tones, I use raw umber with a little bit of Scarlet Lake. I find this works for my paintings, but you are not limited to this mixture. Any warm brown colour should do. I'm being careful not to paint into the area of his beard.
for his trousers, I'm just using some raw sienna, dulled with a little bit of the colour I mixed for the hat. At this stage, I'm just concentrating on the colour of the clothing. Once it's all dry, I will then overlay a glaze of shadow colour, which will help give the clothing a lot more form. Till then, the clothing will look relatively flat. For the child's clothing, I'm using a strong mix of French ultramarine and burnt sienna. This gives me a very deep blue, something like a navy blue. I now need to dry the paper before I go on to the next step. Sometimes you have to re-wet the back of the paper and even your board if the paper dries too much. I felt the tone for his sweater was a bit too strong, so I've lifted some of that paint with a barely damp brush. I make sure to leave some white on the boots and this will read like snow.
when you're painting the distant figures, make sure that you reduce the strength of the tone of your mixture. This figure is in a gully, so you can only see him from shoulders up. I need to make some room in my palette where I can mix some of the foliage colour now. For this I'm primarily going to use French Ultramarine and Raw Umber. I also add a small amount of Oriolan and Cobalt Turquoise just to give the foliage a slight green colour. You can use any cool leaning uh, yellow instead of Oriolan if you like. Something like Windsor Lemon would also work. You can see that I have to add a lot of paint to achieve the right tone that I'm after. So my basic process when mixing paint is to determine how much I need, add that amount of water to my palette and then continue to add pigment to that mix till I get the right colour and the right tone. Now I'm going to mix the colour I need for the branches and the trunks of these trees. Primarily it will be French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. This mixture gives me a dark colour. If I want it to lean towards the blue, I add more French Ultramarine than Burnt Sienna. And if I want it to lean to the brown, I add more Burnt Sienna than French Ultramarine. I like to mix plenty of colours so that while I'm painting, I can concentrate on the design and the shapes of my painting 
rather than having to mix additional colours because I've run out. I drag some of the paint out of my brush because I don't want a lot of paint in the brush when I'm painting the foliage, especially at the start when I'm creating the outer edge of my tree patterns. You should notice that the tip of my brush rarely touches the paper. I'm just using the side of the brush and the texture of the paper to create the foliage effects. You need to develop a light touch to make this technique work. I use Archer's cold press paper 185 GSM and I find that works very well when trying to create a texture like this. I use my rigger brush here to create the fine branches I start from the bottom and drag my brush up and gently lift the brush off the paper as I move away from the center of the tree. I have another video which talks about how to paint various trees and I'll leave a link to that video in the description section down below in case you want to have a look at it. Because this building is, is quite a long way away, I'm just using a dull grey colour for it. Here I'm only just hinting at shapes on the ski lift. When I'm painting these fine lines I rest part of my palm on the paper and that gives me a lot of control when creating the marks.
obviously you have to make sure that the paper under your hand is dry or you will smudge your paint. Here I'm adding some burnt sienna to the foliage mixture. This will increase its tone and also warm it up a bit. Both of these will tend to make the foliage come forward. I'll also add a little bit of aureolin to increase the amount of greenness in the mix. When painting foliage and tree shapes like this, I don't try to put everything that's in the photo into my painting. I use the photo to give me ideas for what to include and what not to include in my subject. I'm always making subtle changes to my mixes, either warming them up, cooling them down or adding more paint to increase the tone or more water to lighten the tone. I like to place my branches and trunks while the foliage is still wet and that gives me a very nice connection between the branches and the foliage.
I often use my fingernail or part of a credit card to regain any highlights I feel I may have lost. So now we're going to start adding some shadow colour. And I've started with my mix. I took some paint out of the brush and then dipped the brush in water to dilute the mixture. So the shadow in the distance is going to be lighter in tone than the shadow in the foreground. This is as a result of the effect of atmosphere. And here again I use the photo to give me inspiration as to the types of marks I want to put on the snow. The photo is also very useful to give you information about the direction of various shadow shapes. When mixing a new colour, I look at the colours that are already mixed in my palette and see whether they are useful in creating this new colour. This allows me to mix certain colours very quickly. In this case, I've added some of the branch brown into the cobalt mix to create this new mixture. I go back into my foliage shapes with some thicker paint to increase the tone in certain sections.
Sometimes I have to wait till the initial foliage shapes have dried. Other times I'll go in um, while they're still wet. It really depends on the shape I'm trying to paint. I'm now painting the shadows that are closer to the foreground. Consequently, I'm adding more paint to my current mix to increase its tone. When I'm creating shapes like this, I make sure that I don't have too much paint in my brush. That makes it much easier for me to create these dry brush strokes. Now going to paint the shadows on these figures. Here I'm just using a very stiff brush to retrieve some of the white where some of the hand colour had accidentally covered some of the, the gap between the hand and the body. The trick is not to have very much water in your brush when you're doing this.
you need to make sure that the underpainting is totally dry when doing a glaze with your shadow colour like this. So a glaze is a wash over completely dry paint. Here I'm dropping in some darker paint to add some additional undulations into the sweater. It's these shadow shapes that are leaving behind the illusion of snow on the skis. You should only have a very small amount of paint in your brush when trying to create these fine lines. This photo is of a very good friend of mine and his grandson and I gave him this painting as a gift once it was finished. Here I'm painting the shadow of the figure and notice all the little uh, bumps and variations in shape as I do this and it's those bumps that give the impression of you know the little uh, indentations in the snow You'll often see me tap my brush on a tissue or a towel and that helps me take out a lot of the moisture in the brush to create some of these more broken edged shapes. At this stage of the painting, I'm being very careful that I don't lose all the white of the paper by putting on too much shadow colour.
I need to dry the figures so that I can put in some of the sharper edge details. My paper is drying quite a bit at this stage, but I don't need to re-wet the back because I'm only putting in some small details, effectively the finishing touches. I'm using the fan brush here. I find the fan brush very useful for creating shapes similar to blades of grass. I use a very stiff brush. It's made from hog hair bristles. I find the synthetic, very soft fan brushes are too soft and the, the hairs tend to clump together and you don't get some of these finer shapes. Because the hairs are quite stiff on the brush, however, you have to make sure you don't press too hard or you will disturb the paint in the underpainting.
I like to have a mat around my painting when I'm signing. That way I can be sure that the signature is going in the right spot. With the mat in place, I have one final look at my painting and make any final little adjustments. If you like this tutorial and have not yet subscribed to the channel, I'd appreciate if you would do so. Also hit the like button and the notification bell so that you'll be advised of every new video I produce. I look forward to seeing you for the next one.